I do not have perfect pitch. In fact, it's estimated that only one out of every 10,000 people actually do have it. So what actually is perfect pitch? And if I don't have it, how am I able to do this? Yo. Oh, shit. What note is this? A? Yes. Hey, all yeah. right. You just watched me think for a moment and decipher what a pitch actually was and get it right. With no point of reference, no instrument to test it out on. I just heard it, thought about it for a moment, and knew what the note was. But I don't have perfect pitch. Well, what's the difference? What's happening here versus what perfect pitch actually is? Probably one of the most famous and popular examples of a person with perfect pitch is, of course, Charlie Puth. And we've talked about Charlie a few times on this channel. In fact, our video about this exact video that you're seeing now, we did it a couple years ago and it did pretty well and it was quite a bit of fun because <laughs> this interview is kind of hilarious. But what you just watched me do is very different from what Charlie does here. That's a... Uh three notes. E G C. Mm. And also known as us common folk as the also uh, known as Facebook. For, also known as first inversion of a C major triad. So a C major triad is talent, ladies and gentlemen. Just um, Notice how what you just saw, Charlie didn't think for a second versus me, I had to think about it. So what's going on in his brain and what's going on in my brain, let's figure that out. And just before we get started, I wanna remind you, you just have a few days left to get the brand new Harmony 101 course at 50% off. It's still on pre-sale, but as soon as we hit July 1st, that will go away. So be sure to grab that if you were interested in checking out the brand new Harmony 101 course. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Secondly, there's a new episode of the podcast out on the brand new Odd Time channel. If you guys would consider subscribing to that channel, it would really help us get it off the ground. And that would mean a ton. We're having an absolute blast. All the links are in the description. You can find it anywhere you get your podcasts. So be sure to check out the new episode of Odd Time. All right, let's go. Charlie Poof has perfect pitch. And the best way that I've ever heard perfect pitch explained is in reference to to colors. Many, if not most of us, know what it means for a person to be colorblind. It does not mean they see in black and white, it simply means that certain colors are harder to distinguish. You might know somebody who gets reds and greens confused or blues and purples confused, whereas if you have normal vision, there's no way you would ever confuse the two. Well, you can almost think of the one out of 10,000 people who have perfect pitch as hearing music in full color, whereas the rest of us are kind of colorblind to some degree. We're gonna do a little bit of a test as a comparison, and I want you to see if you see in full color how easy it is for you to distinguish colors from one another. So go ahead and just tell yourself what color you see right here. Then we'll switch to this, and then we'll switch to this, and finally we'll switch to this. Now, there's probably no chance that your brain didn't go red, green, blue, yellow. You probably didn't have to think about it at all because when you look at red and when you look at blue, they're just different. You simply see it and you know exactly what it is. And that is basically what perfect pitch is. It is hearing music in full color. Now, to probably the vast majority of you, including myself, this note and this note we can tell one's higher than the other, but we don't necessarily, there's no inherent qualities about any of those notes. It's, it's that, that. Those notes, they all are, they're just notes on the piano. They don't sound necessarily different from one another, unless of course we're hearing them in succession like I just played. And probably you're able to tell, oh, well we went up and then down and down and then up and down and down, but we didn't hear each one as red, green, blue, yellow, whatever, right? That C and this E flat have a completely different sound. And it's an easily distinguishable one for people with perfect pitch. And it is estimated that only one out of 10,000 people can do this. And Charlie Puth is of course one of these people and that's why he can do this. If I hear, uh, like, can you play a C, a C sharp is ah, wow. and, a, and an F sharp is ah, and then a B is ah, and then a G is G. So. It's and weird. it's certainly fascinating to people who don't have perfect pitch, but the reality is, is when you put it in the framework of like, oh, well, you know, he can just, he has, he has the ability to hear in the same way that we see colors. It kind of becomes a, a little bit less fantastical, I guess. And I love when people like test it. That's what was so, oh my God. I mean, think about how hilarious it would be if we were just like, what's this color? What's that color? Charles, what note is this? Oh, wait, pause. 
F. C. F. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so we've talked basically about how perfect pitch works, but we still haven't answered the question of how I'm able to do what you just saw. Now you may say relative pitch is the answer, and to some degree you would be correct. It's not the full story, but let's quickly touch on what relative pitch is. All that stuff we were doing earlier when we were demonstrating the notes and how you and I likely, unless you're the one out of 10,000, we don't hear distinguished differences between individual notes, but rather we can hear when notes go up and down and we know, oh, this one's higher than that one. That is relative pitch. Relative pitch is simply the ability to distinguish one note from the other in terms of which note is higher or lower and how far away did we move? Now, relative pitch is an important process in what you just saw, but it's not the full story. So there's a common question that gets kicked around a lot and it is simply, can people learn perfect pitch. Now, I'm going to make an assertion and say no. In an article on UChicago News published in 2015, it discusses a study that actually tested whether or not adults could learn perfect pitch. And while the results are fascinating, I think that this study highlighted some interesting things about what perfect pitch actually is and why I believe that people cannot learn it. Essentially, what this study did is they tried to ingrain notes into the participants' minds so that they could recall them and recreate them without any reference point. Now, again, and if we reference our conversation about color, we can sort of imagine a study that attempted to do the same thing with individuals who have some form of colorblindness. If we look at this image, which demonstrates the difference between normal vision and one form of colorblindness, you can imagine how this study may have been conducted if it were for color and not for music. All we would have to do is simply draw an arrow between the actual color and the reference point that people with this particular type of colorblindness would see and try to get them to memorize the difference between these slight different shades to the point where they would be able to recount them from memory. You could theoretically train full color vision in this manner, but the difference is, is that if somebody's literal cone cells within their eyes are simply just not able to pick up certain colors, you're not going to magically turn that on. In the same way, if somebody does not inherently have the ability to distinguish between certain pitches, you're not going to magically turn that on. However, what you can do and what this study essentially did is mimic the way that I have developed some manner of not perfect pitch, but ability to remember certain pitches from memory. So how do you go. think about that? So what? The Miles Davis thing. So what? How'd you figure that one out? Um, well, okay, so that one my brain went right to an old recording of All Blues by Oscar Peterson, in which I know it's da, bum, ba dum dum ba dum boom. And I remember that, that one's like locked in my brain, so I went from there to ba ba, which is what that note was. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Let's test this on you guys. I'm gonna play three examples of something you know very well, and I want you to pick which one you think is correct. the video right here and write down in the comments which one you think is the correct one. Chances are the vast majority of you probably picked number three and you would be correct. The beginning of Bohemian Rhapsody is in the key of B flat. Now, why did you inherently know that that was correct? Is it because you have perfect pitch? Well, there's a 9,999 out of 10,000 chance that you do not. If it's not perfect pitch, then why is it? Well, probably because you've heard that song so many times that there's no way that you wouldn't remember how to sing it or what key it's in. Now, if all of those sounded the same to you and you don't feel like you would have been able to decide which the correct one was, don't fear, because it doesn't mean that your ears don't work. It simply means that maybe you haven't ingrained that quite enough in your mind to remember it, but you could. There are a few things throughout my life that I've done so many times that they have ingrained certain pitches. Here's a few examples. For one, I can hear E flat pretty much out of nowhere because of Green Dolphin Street. I will always remember Billy's Bounce, which is an F blues from the very first jazz record I ever heard, which was Oscar Peterson Encore at the Blue Note from 1990. In fact, you can't really see it, but it's part of, I integrated that, that album into the part of the set up on the top shelf. That is literally the CD that I got when I was a kid 
Uh, and it was the first jazz I ever heard and it sold me instantly. And I said, I want to play like this. And Billy's Bounce was probably my favorite track off of that record. And I listened to it so much that not only did I unintentionally transcribe the piano solo, but it also ingrained F into my brain. And technically C because the melody for Billy's Bounce starts on C. So the, the key of F and the melody starting on C really ingrained those notes into my mind. So I can hear in the same way that many of you probably could hear. I can hear. I can hear that almost instantly. Another one is D. Now, where did D come from for me? I will never forget that sound. And this right here is the key to developing the closest thing that you probably can develop to perfect pitch if you don't inherently have perfect pitch. It uses relative pitch, but it's not just relative pitch. That example with Bohemian Rhapsody, I could do with so many different things and you'd probably be able to get them right almost every single time. And that's not perfect pitch, but it's a form of pitch memorization that if you then use relative pitch, you can pretty much identify any note that you want simply by intervallic relationships. So I don't think you can learn perfect pitch. I, I feel that it's something that you inherently either have or don't have. However, I do think that you can absolutely ingrain numerous pitches on your brain through a series of memorization and repetition and time. It's not necessarily a skill that's going to particularly help you. I've never really encountered a situation where it's been particularly useful, you know, in the same way that it would be extremely useful to understand harmony, for example. Understanding chords and intervallic relationships is far more important than simply being able to identify which ones they are on the fly. In fact, it's so important that we have put together an entire course all about harmony, and it's currently almost through pre-sale. The full release of the course is coming up on July 1st, and right now you can get it for 50% off before the full course comes out. There's only a few days left of this pre-sale, so be sure to take advantage of it at the link in the description down below. I'm very excited about this course because it's the first course that is taught by somebody other than me, and it's taught by somebody very special, one of the people who taught me everything that I know, and that is the director of jazz studies at Purchase College, which is my alma mater, David de Jesus. He's a phenomenal musician and a phenomenal alto player and just an absolutely great music theory mind. And he has a tremendous knack for explaining these concepts in great detail in such a way that you are sure to understand and have a great grasp on harmony by the time you're through the course. Anyways, be sure to check out the brand new episode of the podcast over on the Odd Time channel. Subscribe if you don't mind. That would really help us out a ton. Thank you for watching this video and we will oh, see you in the next one. <laughs> one, two, three. The wheels on the bus go through the bus.